setting up the ultimate small home studio. That's what we're doing today. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Capper and thank you for stopping by for another video. In this video today, I wanna to go over the two key pillars or principles or whatever, whatever you wanna call them, I don't even know anymore, that uh, go in or that should go into you setting up the ultimate small home studio. This is kind of the same philosophy for any studio, if I'm being honest, but today's subject is, is my B room and I've just finished setting it completely up because I'm moving in here full time while the big room gets a makeover. So I've moved everything in here and I've set everything up in exactly the way that I need to. I've got a session this afternoon with a client, so I'm gonna be having clients in here. And I wanna go over like the principles and the ideas on how you can set up the best, most efficient home studio. And in this example, it's pretty small, so I think a lot of you will relate to this. And then in a little bit, I'm gonna do a whole studio tour and show you everything that's in here and tell you exactly what I use everything for, why I put everything where, uh, exactly how I hooked everything up, et cetera, et cetera. So if I count all the home studio setups I've had, in addition to all the professional and commercial studios I've had, this is actually my ninth room. This is the ninth time that I've set up a room from scratch. And there's definitely some things that I have learned along the way. So what I think is there are kind of two pillars, if you will, of what makes a great studio. Kind of doesn't matter if it's a home studio or how big or how small it is, there's two parts. Now the first part is how good does it sound? Now in this category, there's your acoustic treatment, your monitors, your monitor placement, uh, and the gear itself. How The gear is probably the least important part of it, but how good does everything sound, the sonic side of your studio? And the second pillar, I guess, if you will, is workflow. How easy is it to get work done in the room? How efficiently can you work in the room? And I think both of them are equally as important because if you're in my situation, like I'm, I'm working on 150 to 200 songs a year. And so I need this room to be super efficient. I can't have things holding me back. I can't stop in the middle of sessions to move things around or hook things up or climb behind my racks. It's incredibly important for me to be efficient. So the first thing I think everyone should do, and you can write it down if you feel it's necessary, is make a list of all of the things that you need to accomplish inside your room. Now my room is a little bit special because I do this YouTube stuff in here as well. Uh, and so I have a, a couple extra needs on top of just producing music. But so let's go over them real quick. So full productions from the ground up, obviously not drums. So everything minus drums needs to be able to happen in here. Electric guitars, acoustic guitars, uh, keys, uh, tracking all the vocals, any sort of programming, mixing, We'll see if I can master in here because I did just move in and this is not like a mastering level acoustic treatment. Uh, this was treated more as a tracking space, but that's what I need to happen in here on the music side and then on the YouTube side, I need to film. I need to be able to do this and I also need to be able to do uh, tutorials. So I need to be able to screen record and capture audio from Pro Tools out to make tutorials. And I do gear reviews. And so I need a couple extra patch points so that way I can get into the whole system with a couple extra pieces of gear if I'm reviewing a piece of gear. And so those are all the things I have to accomplish in this room. So I would encourage you to make a list just like that. What, what all do you need to do inside of your room? So that way you can know how to proceed. Now I have a whole video and I'll link it down below going over the acoustic treatment, the plan and the acoustic treatment and the install of this and building the first version of this desk here. Uh, really, really awesome video. It's one of my favorite videos that I've ever done on the channel. I'll link it down below and I'll also link down below every single other thing that I talk about in this video. But on the acoustic treatment side of things, uh, this was meant to be a B room, an editing suite and a tracking room. Not so much a super polished mix room and not a mastering room. That was the plan and with the acoustic treatment uh, that we put in here. But for those of you that haven't seen that video, let me just go over the stuff that's in here, the sonic quality, the sound quality of the stuff real quick, and then uh, I'll shift over into why I put things where and how I hooked things up so that way uh, we can move 
over into the workflow side of things here in a bit. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So every light in this whole room is on the Philips system. So uh, it's all controllable from this app right here. And uh, so you can select the entire room or individual lights. Um, we're gonna go daylight on the entire room since I'm filming. Normally it'd be like warm white or something. But, and then we just grab this, pull it all the way up. Let's talk about this. Okay, so first, the most important thing, acoustic treatment. So all these panels are made by Music City Acoustics. I have a whole video, I'll link it down below, going over the treatment plan and we go over how we, we did everything. This room was very much designed to be an editing suite and a tracking room. So that's why we have some diffusers here, is uh, just to make the room not quite so dead because it's gonna be here for tracking. If this was a mix room, like just a mix room, then we would have certainly done panels here over the wet bar, so that way your first reflection points are more done. We probably would have done another ceiling cloud here and probably another one over there. But all the panels in here are four inches thick um, and they look absolutely beautiful. Really wanted this whole corner to be completely done up because that's where the singer was gonna be. I always knew that there would be a microphone there. So that was always the plan and we want that nice and dead. Got a nice, huge, fluffy, super thick rug to try to cut down on the slap from floor to ceiling. And then we have the Focal Solo 6s. These are the new versions and I, I think they're really good. So this is not really the optimum position for these studio monitors. You'd really typically want them further away from the wall, but that's just, this is what I had to work with. This is, this is the space and it is what it is. Luckily, these have an EQ on the back of them that uh, you can adjust the sound. And so I've tamed some of that low end that you get from putting monitors that close to the wall. So it's, it's worked out just fine. They sound really good in here. Now I've got the TV here set up as my second display. So that works out really well. Also, you can either do screen mirroring with the Mac or you can run a cable up into it. And it just, it's perfect because one, the client can sit back here on the couch and they can really pay attention to what's going on, but also just having two screens. I really like having two screens if I'm not gonna have an ultra wide screen. All right, so let's start off with the computer. This is a M1 Max Mac Studio and it has been a beast. I've been running this computer for a while now. Uh, all the hard drives are, are hooked up all the time. Uh, this computer has enough connectivity to, to have all of them hooked up at all times. But I also like that we've got a card slot on the front and then a couple additional USB-Cs on the front. And a couple things that I've got set up here is one, I've got a an additional USB type A here, uh, an adapter already hooked up and ready to go for hooking up to either the Waza tube amp expander or the, the Moog synthesizer or whatever. And then I've also got another jumper here already hooked up for running uh, additional hard drives because I'm always bouncing sessions back and forth and I always need to transfer files. So that stays there all the time. Card slot on the front, which is wonderful for doing videos and content like this. So this all stays hooked up all the time. Uh, if you remember, I was running the Avid Inbox Studio, which uh, was sitting right up here for the longest time. And I thought it sounded really great. Unfortunately, because I do screen capture tutorials, I really needed to use this monitor controller because I needed three speaker outputs. So this is the Grace M905 monitor controller. I didn't necessarily need to go with this high end of one, although it sounds absolutely amazing. What I did need is three speaker outputs. That's what was important to me. So I've got my Focal Solar 6s on speaker one. I've got the Oritone 5Cs on speaker two. And then speaker three is for this Tascam hard disk recorder. So anytime I'm doing screen capture videos, I just click on speaker three. This now becomes the level that's headed to the hard disk recorder. And so I can screen capture everything and capture the output of the monitor controller and that's how I do all of my tutorial videos. So again, identifying exactly what I need to do, which in my situation, I need three speaker outputs, not two, uh, big deal in terms of making the whole setup super efficient and working really well together. So vocal mic over here, now I'll swap this out based on the singer, but we've got headphones over here and the cable just runs down below here to the rack and it comes in right here. So this is sitting here at all times, that way I can just patch it right into the patch bay 
to get to any preamp I want, no matter what I'm tracking. So it's probably a good time to talk about the patch bay. This is just a Samson patch bay. I'll link it down below. And this is a dry erase label from Trace Audio. And so what it does is it actually allows you to label very, very easily um, all your different stuff. And it's awesome because you can just take an alcohol wipe and wipe it completely clean and relabel it. I think everyone who has a patch bay needs one of these. Now, as far as workflow is concerned, the rack has to be right there because when I'm sitting here at the sweet spot, I can literally just reach over and grab any knob that I want. So the entire rack is laid out so that way the things I touch the most, the things that I'm gonna tweak the most are the closest to me. And the things I'm gonna tweak the least are the furthest away from me. I will always set every rack up exactly like this because efficiency. And so this rack is kind of like the bare minimum of what I need to mix in here and to track in here and to not feel held back. So we have a pair of Cappy Hiders. These are about to get swapped out for something uh, a little bit more special that I'm so pumped to tell you guys, but Cappy Hiders on my mix bus. I've tracked just about every vocal I've recorded in the past six or eight months through those. Awesome on guitars, awesome on acoustic, literally everything. Moving over to the Serpent SB4001 mix bus compressor, the SPL Big stereo widening, and so that is my analog mix bus chain. Then we move over to the Cappy LC40 kick drum EQ, FC526 uh, kick drum compressor, FC25 snare drum EQ, FC526 snare drum compressor, Bax 2020 additional like high low shelf style uh, EQ and it sounds really really good. Then moving up we've got the pair of Rupert Neve Design Newton Channel. Uh, I have a whole video on this that I did just not too long ago. These are awesome. These have ended up on everything. Tracking and mixing, I've been running everything through these. They are super, super awesome. Next up is the Distressor. Now, I typically track all my vocals through my TubeTech LCA2B, but the whole thing needs rebuilt. It is time for a full rebuild, and I needed a compressor that I could track vocals through and mix when I needed to uh, an additional compressor when mixing so the distressor fits that bill really well for me. Next up, the Audioscape 260 VU. This has been on my drum bus since the day that I got it, my parallel drum bus. It's on every single song, love it. Boss Waza Tube Amp Expander. Uh, I have a whole video on this. Actually, I have whole videos on most of this stuff. So this is a load box cabinet simulator uh, for the guitar amps, and I record all my guitars direct through that now. Apollo 16 Mark II interface for now, that it will be changing soon. And then that brings us to guitars. So first of all, why are the guitar amps on this side of the room? Well, there's a very good reason for that. The reason is because as I'm sitting here in the sweet spot, the guitar cable comes out of the guitars on that side. So it's the shortest run of the guitar cable straight over to the amps. They could have just as easily sat here, but then the cable would be running around behind me and then all the way over to here. So positioning everything in the room so that way that's the shortest cable runs, the most efficient, the easiest to get to. These are the amps that I use all the time. We've got the Handwired Deluxe Reverb. I have a video on that. Uh, Friedman Small Box 50, Third Power Citizen Gain, CSR 40, and the Supro. Handful of pedals that I use on everything. And these are always plugged in and ready to go. So I can literally just turn it on, plug a guitar in, and we're off rolling. Now, the one thing that's not in here yet is there will be a keyboard. My Moog synthesizer is probably gonna sit right here very soon, but I'm waiting on the keyboard stand for that. Guitars over here, this is uh, about the least amount of guitars that I can that I can possibly use. Uh, so we've got a couple PRSs, we've got a Sur, we've got a couple Iconics, uh, my Gibson acoustic guitar, Warwick bass, and so these are like the minimum that I use on every single song, and I can pretty much get through any session with just these guitars, which brings me to this little hallway back here. So this is, this is just the doorway to the attic, but this little hallway was kind of wasted space. So what do I do with it? Well, I decided to put this folding workbench here so you can just grab this. And now that is a super sturdy workbench to change strings, work on gear, whatever I need to do. Got a couple tools up here, and this is my charging wall. So we've got the gimbal, additional lights, like camera batteries, and uh, a little light 
And then shelves up here, just for additional storage of just crap. You gotta figure out where to, what to do with all the crap. So zero wasted space in this whole entire room. Now this whole room is only about nine foot by 14 foot. It's not a very big room at all. Uh, traditionally now you would want your monitoring to be set up lengthways. So you would want to fire your monitors the length of the room. But unfortunately we've got a bathroom right there, a hallway right there, and we've got a whole wet bar right here. So it's just, it's not really an option in this room. Otherwise that's how I would have done it. But this room is set up just big enough for clients, we've got a whole couch right here for clients to sit on and chill on. Uh, you know, they can sit there and play guitar if they want. They will be standing to sing right there. This is kind of fun. Why am I not just doing this in every single video? <laughs> Why do you guys even watch this channel? But this is like the minimum. This is not the minimum for editing. This is not the minimum for just tracking. This is not the minimum for just mixing. This is my minimum workflow for full production, programming, editing, mixing, we'll see if I can master in here, uh, tracking everything, filming these kind of videos, filming tutorials, filming gear reviews, that all has to happen inside of this room. And that's how I've set it up to accomplish just that. There'll be links down below for everything I talked about in this video, including a bunch of links for different videos that I've done on this different gear. Those links go to Sweetwater. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. Anytime you guys need any piece of gear, you can hop on any one of my videos and click on any one of the links and purchase anything you need. And it goes a long ways to help support this channel. So I very much appreciate if you guys use those links anytime you need to buy anything. But I really wanna encourage encourage you guys to make a list of all of the things that you need to do and then reassess your room, reassess how to set it up, where to physically put things, how to organize your racks. So that way you can be held back the least. You, you want to make the fewest moves possible. This is my philosophy in mixing and also when I'm producing. How do I get to the finish line? while making the fewest moves possible, the shortest cable runs, the fewest times I have to reach, the fewest times I have to move out of the sweet spot. How do I get to the finish line without interrupting myself? And, and that is kind of a philosophy that I follow through how to set up a room, how to mix, like literally everything. So I hope that this helped you. Uh, drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, smash that like button. Just, just do it, it's, it's right down there. All the links that you're gonna go to are right below the like button. So on your way down there, just smash it. All right, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one, peace.